Good morning students. Today we take up a new lesson and that is disasters. So what do we actually mean by a disaster? Now it is an event or you can say it is a mess happening that causes a huge loss of lives and property. Now disasters can be either natural or man-made. Natural disasters are caused by forces of nature, devastating earthquakes, floods, cyclones or violent storms, droughts, that is acute water shortage caused by long spells of abnormally low rain are a few examples of natural disaster. Sometimes human activities also add to the risk of natural disasters. Deforestation and burning of fossil fuels contribute to global warming. Continued global warming can cause polar ice to melt, which can cause submergence of coastal areas because when polar ice melts, it leads to the rising up of the sea level. So it can lead to the coastal areas of several continents to be submerged. In some places, it can also lead to droughts because continued deforestation reduces rainfall and ultimately these reasons can lead to droughts. Man-made disasters are caused due to human negligence. Sometimes it is deliberate or Sometimes it can be malfunctions of the equipment. A plane crash, a train accident, fires in the buildings, stampede, nuclear accidents are all examples of human or man-made disasters. Acts of terrorism can also be considered as man-made disaster because it is a deliberate attempt to create terror among the people. Now what is a hazard? A hazard is a threat or a risk which can lead to a disaster. For example, a river is a hazard to all those who are living along the banks because floods can create a disastrous effect on all these people who are living along the banks of the river. Similarly, a leak at a factory which is producing some poisonous chemicals can also lead to a disastrous consequence. Thus, such a factory represents a health hazard to the community around it. All human habitation are at a risk from hazards of some kind or the other. The chances of a disaster occurring at a place depend on the location and surroundings. For instance, towns and cities in an earthquake prone zone face a high risk of getting affected by earthquakes. Coastal areas are prone to cyclones and 
arid regions are likely to be affected by droughts. People living close to a nuclear power plant and other factories are likely to face the risk of disastrous accidents. So we need to have a disaster management. Now what is this disaster management? About it I am going to speak about a little later. Now disasters always bring with itself a lot of suffering. Though some events like a cyclone can be anticipated, forecasted, but many disasters like a landslide or an earthquake can catch people unawares. Often a large number of people are killed or injured in these kinds of disasters. Homes are destroyed or people are forced to leave their homes in search of food, water and means of livelihood. To add to their misery, disasters such as floods are accompanied by widespread diseases. So here you can see this is the condition after the cyclone is over. What a mayhem. Everything has been destroyed. Most of these areas are affected by stagnant water. Now this leads to several widespread diseases like malaria, chikungunya and other mosquito related diseases. In a disaster affected region, natural resources like agricultural fields and man-made resources like roads, bridges, telephone wires, electric poles, all are damaged or destroyed. Now this calls for heavy unplanned expenditure for reconstruction of the bridges, roads and all this puts the economy at a great strain. So huge amount of money has to be reinvested on all these roads which have been destroyed or bridges which have fallen. The socio-economic conditions also play a big role in the impact of a disaster. The poor people suffer the most because when flood water strikes, the brick houses, they can be damaged but they are normally not washed away. But a mud house is very badly damaged and it can be washed away also during the floods. The poor do not have so much of savings and in order to recover they need a lot of help from the government. Most of their belongings or their means of livelihood all is lost in these kinds of disaster. So their suffering continues for a very long time even after the disaster's effect is over. It is here when the disaster management steps in. Since we all know that human beings are helpless in front of natural disasters, so a plan for being prepared has to be laid for all those areas which are likely to be affected by disaster. The response of the people as well as the government has to be ensured. That is how well the preparedness program has reached to the people and how will they save themselves when a disaster is likely to strike. After the disaster strikes, what plans are there to recover what has been lost as well as providing relief to the people during the time of distress. Lastly, the government along with its team of experts and planners ensure mitigation plans which include preventive measures that will provide guaranteed security to some extent 
against the disasters so that is what we have time for today thank you